Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a dreams tutorial. Uh, we're still working on the enemy fight scenario. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you a few things. Um, I've actually probably added a bit too many, but um, hey. Right, so we've I've added a block for the player. I've removed the health displays from above their heads, and now I'm displaying the player um, on the screen at the top and the uh, hit damage that is done to the monster uh, will appear uh, above the monster's head and float up. I've added some attack music for some drama and I've also added player lives and a game over situation. So lots to do there. So let's start off um, with the Let's just sh let's show what I built. That would be the easiest thing to do. Right, okay, so here we have the player health. And also the lives. So we've got three lives. And it's telling me I've got to make five kills. So here are our monsters over here. Let's get within his range. Right. Mm. Now, you see, if I tag him... Mm. Ten points are coming off my monster and the attack music has started there we go I've killed one but my health is quite low let's see what happens here so if it's not oh dear I've got I'm attacked from all sides now and I lost a life so I've only got two lives left Got him. Oh. Right, I've only got one life left, so if I die now, it will be game over. Oh no. Step away. Yeah. Come on, stab him. Right, I really ought to demonstrate the game over, so I'm just going to let him kill me. There we go. Music stops. I get some death music. And that's it. Game over. And we're back into the... Uh into the end game right okay there we go so we've got lots to see today right let's start off um with a simple thing uh, the player um block right actually putting the block is simple uh, actually making it so that it actually works as a block is not so simple right here is the controller logic for our player and i've chosen the circle button for our block and the circle button is wired directly into this timeline. Here is our timeline with a keyframe in. And that's our block pose. Um, so he sort of leans slightly backwards and his arms up. That's his block pose. Um, make sure that your timeline is, um, make sure that this is slightly overlapping so that you don't get um, a, a stop start situation with it. Uh, in our keyframe we have keep changes on and I have a slight slow power up so that he moves into that position rather than just immediately pops into it but it's entirely up to you how you animate this so there's our timeline and that happens when you uh, hold down the circle button he will stay in that position we've also got a transmitter here that is also linked to the circle button so when you're holding the circle button down it's sending a transmitted signal uh, I've called the transmitter block and in our um, monster brain which is over here um, in the uh, attack here is the timeline for his right arm attack um, I've got a wireless receiver. It's looking for block. And that is wired into a NOT gate. And the NOT gate is wired into the power on our health modifier. 
so if you are not blocking that is when the health modifier will work and because the health modifier power uh, is linked into everything else nothing else will work if you're blocking so um, the the rumble and the camera shake and the uh, reduction in health on the player will not happen if you are blocking it will only happen if you are not blocking so that's how that works I know it's a lot of wires and things and it's a bit scary because there's lots of gadgets but there you go right so that is our change to the attack and also um, let's have a look at the life situation now before we had our health displayed above our player and our monster uh, we're not doing that now uh, so um, let's have a look at the damage this is the hit reaction for the monster this is our timeline for that so let's open that up so now you can see we've got a text displayer in there and that's displaying uh, a number 10 above um, the monster's head unfortunately you can't see the monster there it is uh, you can't see the monster because um, he's being emitted so um, there we go you can just about see it so you put a, a number 10 in the world at the position that you want it to start and then I've got a keyframe is where you want it to end and then you have that keyframe to just gradually power up and what will happen is that number 10 will rise up out of there um, when he is doing a hit reaction there we go that's a very very simple way of displaying um, the, the damage that you're doing to uh, the player so that little 10 will just rise up like that every time it plays this timeline um, in terms of our puppets how that has all been displayed uh, we've got a player the player health and there's the number displayer from here so uh, the current health is being displayed as a number and we've got some text up there as well and and I've opened up a brand new uh, microchip uh, called player lives now have I closed it down <laughs> yeah I closed it down let's open it up okay there we go so here's player lives this is a independent microchip do not put this in your player um, this is quite important um, so let's go through this right I've set a variable called lives this is a uh, a variable that's going to hold uh, how many lives our player has got I've, I've set it so that it starts off at three it has a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of five because so maybe in your game uh, there might be a point where uh, he can gain some extra lives maybe leveling up or uh, gets an amulet or something whatever um, so you want to set uh, how many maximum lives you want in here and the minimum at zero here I've also turned on persisting dreams so if I have different levels that my player are going to, is going to go to um, I will just have a copy of this variable in the next level and it's going to pick up whatever level whatever number of lives we have in this level and transfer it to the variable in the next level so you don't suddenly end up with five lives because you've changed uh, level so there we go right then this is wired into a number displayer we've got a text displayer here with a heart emoji uh, if you go to my website that's uh, www.dreamschool.co.uk um, there is a page in there that directs you to a very nice website that's got a list of all the shortcuts for all the emojis and emoticons um, so just type emoji into my um, website and you should be able to find the list um, and you can put your own little uh, icons on that are useful um, I've chosen a heart for this uh, which is the normal thing for showing how many lives you have right so the lives is wired into a couple of calculators this one is looking to see if the number of lives is greater than zero and this is wired into our controller sensor now this is what is happening here 
when you die the normal situation with the controller sensor is it's wired directly into the respawn so every time you die you're going to respawn we want to delete that wire so you delete the wire that's connected these two together and we're going to put an AND gate in instead so now we're going to wire the is dead into the AND gate and that calculator that's saying have we got more than zero lives into that AND and wire that into the respawn so now it's going to check to see if this variable has enough lives in it before it will respawn it will not respawn if it's zero right now we've got another calculator that says is it zero it's checking to see if it's zero and if so it's going to set off this counter which is i've called end game and i'm just using this as a, a nice easy point uh, for all the things to be attached to so when we're in end game situation um we're going to i've got a variable modifier here that's going to deal with the attack music and i'll show you that in a minute I've got a keyframe uh, that's just changing the visibility of my player because when you die and you don't respawn, uh, the, the um, mannequin just sort of stands there, which isn't isn't good. So we want to we don't want it to. Although it's not respawning, for some reason it it does just stick the mannequin there, which is a bit weird. But there you go. So we're going to have to make him invisible so that you can't see him. So um. We, um, so when you're dead you're gone uh, you could change this keyframe so you could have a death animation in here so instead of a keyframe maybe a timeline with a death animation in there so the player collapses to the floor or whatever you want to do so that, that, that's what you do you put that in there right I've got a timeline which is my death music and when that has finished it's going to trigger my doorway which is game over and I've got some text displays that happen as well so I've got a black one and a red one to give you that nice 3d effect so that's the end game situation when our player lives equals zero so that's how all of that works let's have a look at our attack music Whoop. so we've got another variable here this is oh no, that's kills we've done that where's our attack music i've now lost my attack music microchip which is open somewhere is that it that's it there we go that's it right okay we've got a variable here called attack music this is normally set to zero i haven't changed these because i don't really need to um and um this is when it's zero it's not sending a signal as soon as it becomes a number it's going to send a signal so um it's wired into the power of our battle theme a bit of text that I've put at the bottoms because uh, I wanted to uh, show uh, the name of the person who made the music but I mean obviously you probably wouldn't have that in your game and I've got a music channel uh, speaker because I wanted to change the volume of this battle theme which was rather loud um, so here's our battle theme um, I've decided it's uh, music a sound channel um, I've tried changing the volume actually are on the theme but it didn't seem to make any difference so that's why I've put this speaker down and I've reduced the volume to here for, for all music down to 56% which is uh, a little bit less loud than it uh, was before so when this variable is a one it's going to play this battle theme so what turns that on right well here is our um, monster brain and here is our detections um, part this microchip here the detect part and I've added the variable modifier here so uh, tap music I'm going to set when powered on to one so as soon as any of the monsters uh, detects the player and starts running towards them it's going to trigger the attack music obviously you don't have to have it at this point you could have it at this point which is the point at which the the uh, monster first attacks you it's entirely up to you i just thought it was better that you get the dramatic music as soon as you're detected so um that's going to change this uh variable to a one and it's going to set the music off right so what turn uh, on what turns the music off 
Uh, what turns the music off is uh, our scenario here that we did last time. Um, so when uh, we've killed all of our monsters, so when this is a five, I've got the variable modifier here, attack music set to zero, and that will turn the music off. And that's true for any music you've got playing. If you have it on a variable and have it zero and wire it to the power, you want to turn the music on or off as soon as you turn that to a zero it will turn off and turn one it will turn on so that's what it's doing the other th the other scenario that will turn the music off is this here when the player lives at zero and the game over is on um, we've got another variable modifier here to set it to zero and anything else that you want to, to, to turn it off that's what the, the variable modifier that's what you would add so there we go so there we have our um, music and our game over and our player lives and everything else i think that is it i think i've gone over all of the changes yes i think i did the block didn't i did, did i do the block yes i think i did yes there we go right that's all of it thank you for watching hope it was useful and i'll catch you in your dreams <laughs>